Good morning everyone and happy Wednesday. Yes, it is a happy Wednesday. Uh, I just wanted to come on very briefly. Um, uh, I'm going to address Jay in this little card as onesie. And it's like aqua color has like this uh, peach little like fruit, little berries. And it has like the little peach bow and then she's going to wear this peach headband. Yeah, I just really wanted to come on. And update everyone first of all I want to give everybody thanks for reaching out to me many persons were concerned they know the Bahamas was under uh, hurricane Dorian and yes it really was devastating for a few islands now the island that I live I will say that there was no major warning for the island that I live there was you know everything is fine there's no damages where I live but I was born and raised in Grand Bahama all of my family members not all I do have some family members like in Nassau everybody in Nassau was fine nothing major done in Nassau there's some flooding electricity is off but for the most part everybody is good in abaco devastation 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 uh i don't know anyone personally in abaco i don't to my understanding have any family members in abaco i know my son has family members there uh, but i i'm not familiar with them in Grand Bahama, yes, most of my family is in Grand Bahama. I have my parents, my siblings, my children, my cousins, friends. Yes, like I said, I'm born and raised there. Went to school, everything. You know, my whole history is in Grand Bahama. And, um, yeah, Grand Bahama, like Abaco, took the worst beating. Grand Bahama was more flooding was more flooding but in the end flooding is also very very bad uh, I'm gonna speak more on Grand Bahama because uh, you know like I said Abaco devastation completely lives lost uh, everything destroyed yes I don't have any family members there that I'm aware of I mean my sympathy goes to all those persons in Abaco it, it's it's awful there it really is in Grand Bahama um, did I thank everyone for reaching out to me special thanks I got dozens and dozens of messages persons who are concerned about me about my family yes I'm safe I'm fine the island that I live there was no major warning here, there was no damages, none of that stuff. Um, we lost electricity for just a few hours. Everything was good on my end. And Grand Bahama was not. Grand Bahama lost electricity and water right away. And um, devastation, yes. Flooding, yes. Uh, all my family members experienced flooding. All. Uh, my daughter had to evacuate my family members my cousins they all had to evacuate i'm pretty sure they're in um, i spoke to my daughter she's good she's fine uh she was good where she evacuated some family members evac evacuated and still had to evacuate because even where they went there was still flooding so they still had to evacuate i've not heard from them as to what happened i don't know i'm still in search of those family members um let me tell you, my mom and my son was flooded. They were stuck in the house and I, I, they couldn't get out. I'm just so thankful that the water just went up to their waist. It didn't go beyond their waist. I'm just so thankful for that. I spoke to my son and I told him, you know, he has to put a plan in place. You know in case the water goes beyond their waist I told him I asked him if he knew where the manhole was in the house and he said yes 
and I told him he's gonna have to get something sharp an axe a hatchet something because if the water continues to rise he's they're gonna have to find themselves in the ceiling and once in the ceiling they're gonna have to uh, find a way to cut a hole into the ceiling so that they can get air or that they can go on top of the ceiling depending on how high the flooding gets fortunately like I said for my family for the persons in that area where my mom is the flooding on the inside of the house did not go any higher than their waist. So therefore my, oh, I'm talking and not dressing. So therefore, uh, my mom and my son was on top of the kitchen countertop. They stayed there for hours. My son said he noticed that the kitchen countertop was beginning to get weak. You know, because like my husband said, the seawater acts like an acid. It destroys stuff. So my son moved and he went on the stove. Yeah. And, um, you know, to, to eliminate some of that weight that was on the countertop, kitchen countertop. So they were there for a few hours overnight. I was scared to death. Let me tell you, I was scared to death. Uh, and during this time, Hurricane Dorian had just passed the eye, which means that they still had a long way to go. Hurricane Dorian just sat, uh, moved at only one miles per hour. I mean, it was torture. It was torture. And let me tell you, even though I was not in the middle of that with them, I was there mentally. I couldn't think of nothing else. I, could, I mean, I couldn't focus on nothing else. When I first heard the news, I, I, I started trembling. My husband asked me for my son's phone number. I couldn't think of it. For my brother's phone number, I couldn't think of it. I had to quickly catch myself. I said, listen, you have to think. I said, they need you. They were in a position where they needed persons on the outside to help and I was able to contact them by cell phone because their cell phone was charged they had no electricity but their cell phone was charged I was able to contact them that way and you know trying to encourage them and lift them up I was calling absolutely every rescue number there is every emergency number there is every number there is and let me tell you because keep in mind all my family members uh, for me, I had electricity, so I could have done more phone calls. My other family members, they did not have electricity. So they only had the use of their cell phones, and they had to be careful as to how they use their battery and their cell phone. So I was making all the phone calls. I called absolutely every number. I left messages at uh, where I was able to, like on WhatsApp. I left messages pleading for help for my mom. You know, she's an elderly lady. For my son, they were stuck in the house, the water was rising, and it, it, let me tell you, it's, it's an experience. You, I mean, you hear about other person's experience, and, you, and you're sorry, you feel it, you think you feel it until it happens to your own. It's a different feeling, I'm telling you, it's a different feeling. And I was so scared, like when my mind started to wonder, like what if the water comes up to their neck, like what are they going to do? I had to catch myself and say don't allow your mind to go there I spoke to my son I told him what to do and he said mommy how am I gonna get Grammy in the ceiling I said you're gonna do it you're going to do it I had to keep pause so that you know he, he don't panic my mom is good I can tell you because she's one of those strong hard praying Christian women so my mom never wavered in her faith she never thought it was going to get to that point because she trusted in God. And I, I had no worries on that end with her. I just needed my son to know that, hey, you are the young man in that situation. You're going to have to do the work. And I told him, I said, listen, I said, plan now. Don't wait for the water to rise up any higher. I said, get the tallest bro in the house and put it under the manhole. Get a chair, put it in front of the bureau. I said, you're creating a stairway where you can walk up like a stairway. 
I say get the tallest burrow in the house, put the chair in front of it, get a hatchet, have these things in place because if that water comes and it's rushing up, you may not have the time to do this. So I said, grab Grammy, go up into the ceiling. Once you're in the ceiling, cut a hole in the ceiling so you can get air. There's a chance if the water continues to rise, you may just have to sit out on top of the roof. And he said, okay, mommy. And he put stuff in place because he took some pictures and I could see the chair, uh, you know, and stuff, the bureau and stuff. So, you know, he said he couldn't find nothing really, really sharp. So he had a knife. I said, well, the knife is better than nothing. Just whatever you want it sharp. You want the sharpest object in the house. So, and let me tell you, I will tell you, I have some nieces in the States. They're in the States for school. They were awesome. From the minute I found out that my mom was in danger, my son was in danger, and the water was rising, I, we have this family group on WhatsApp. When I went on the family group, and I put that in there, no, first my sister had messaged me and told me, and she said, you have to call mommy, the, the house is flooded, the water is rising, and I, I went in a pa panic in that moment, in that moment. And then I had to catch myself because my I, and I told my husband and he asked me my brother's number and my son's number. Couldn't remember it for the life of me. I had to catch myself. I had to go into the phone to actually, into my cell phone to get their numbers. It was that bad. And then I had to catch myself and realize, you know what? They need me. I don't have the time to panic. I have to pause myself and catch myself. And that's what I did. I had to do it. So, um... It was it it was rough. Like I said, I called everybody, got no answer. And for the ones, the phone calls, I got answers from machines. Uh, it took me to the inbox. The inbox was full. You couldn't leave no message. So wherever I was able to leave a message on WhatsApp, I did that. I I, I called absolutely every number. And I mean, I did the best I could do. And then dark fall. I knew. See the problem too with Grand Bahama is the wind was not letting up everybody was in devastation everybody was flooding everybody had a problem everybody did you know what happened you know what i noticed i noticed what happened was neighbors had to help neighbors family had to help family you you couldn't rely on the rescue team or the emergency numbers you couldn't, I guess because there were just too many people that needed help. You just at some point you had to realize you have to help yourself. And that's what you had to do. Like my mom and my son got out of the house because of my brother and my sister. No rescue team. No. What I'm saying is I'm not blaming anybody. I just, I, I cannot because everybody was having the same problem everywhere. Everywhere. So I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just so thankful that they're safe i have some family members like i said i'm not you know i i, I don't know i hadn't heard from um I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that they're in the shelters i know some had evacuated to shelters and those shelters started flooding i hadn't heard anything else from them um uh, uh the, the water's have gone down a lot so now my sister and my family members because i don't live in grand bahama they're in grand bahama they're looking for other family members you know and i i think that they're probably in shelters i i do believe that i, I do believe that um i'm just i'm just so thankful that like i said i haven't heard of any uh, everyone in terms of my family is okay. Yes, there, 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 there's, there's going to be lots of, there's lots of damages, you know. I mean, you can't think about those things. Lives are priority during this time. I just was praying and praying and praying. And I, I'm so thankful to everyone that reached out to me that I was able to ask them to pray. And they all prayed. And I'm so thankful for everybody's prayer. Uh, 
You know, they, they, I've heard of some casualties in Grand Bahama. I, I don't think they have made it like completely like uh, like announce it. They haven't, but there's there's casualties. I've heard of drownings. Like many persons were stuck in their ceiling, didn't get out. Um, a gentleman that lost his wife. They were on the kitchen counter, and the kitchen counter gave way, and she drowned. Uh, I've heard of some casualties, you know, but you know it's really not out there because. Oh, they haven't announced it as yet because I guess it's just so many persons that need help and so many people that's unaccounted for that everybody is still looking for family members. So it's just going to take some time, really. It's going to take some time. But like I said, you know, um, I just really wanted to thank everybody. Just come on and just... Um, continue to ask for prayers. That's all. Right now, everybody just needs prayers because my understanding is that there are still some persons that is still trapped in their in their ceiling. Really, I I don't know if they, those persons there were families that were trapped. I don't know if they got out. I don't know. Um, uh, just prayers. Everybody just need prayers. Everybody just need prayers right now. So that's all we're asking for, just prayers, just pray. But the Bahamas, well, when I say the Bahamas, the island of Grand Bahama and Abaco, yeah, they really got it. They really got it beaten really, really badly. Really, really badly. And for hours on top of hours because the hurricane was not moving. Hurricane Dorian was only one mile per hour, did not move. They just took a beating and a beating and a beating, you know. But like I said, I'm just so thankful that so far, I so far, I, like I said, I haven't heard from all my family members, but I haven't heard of any casualties in terms of my family members. My mom and son is safe. My daughter is safe. She evacuated. Um, uh, my dad was okay from the beginning. Uh, no issues with my dad where he stayed. He's fine. Uh, my brother is fine. Yeah, so, you know, some other family members, yeah, we're, we're, we're still looking for. We have heard of a few that's in shelters. There's some others we're still looking for. Hopefully they're in the shelters, you know. But uh, my sister and my brother is able now to, you know, like I said, the water has gone down quite a bit and the, what's happening now is the people themselves are doing the work. They're looking for their family members. and They're not relying on help at this point. They're going out there and they're looking for their family members and doing what needs to be done. That's what's happening right now. So, yeah, like I said, and it's no blame on anybody. It's just that the devastation was just too big and everybody, everybody was had experience flooding. Or, you know, everybody had the same cry. Everybody did. It was bad for everybody straight across the board. But I just want to thank everybody again. This is it. I'm going to go. Thank you all so much again for all of your prayers and your concerns. I do appreciate it. I needed it. I appreciate it. And, um, and yeah. So thank you all so much for watching. And you have a super great day. Bye-bye.